All right, welcome back to Gail Kramer's Custom Cars and Anything, guys. I uh, was going to put the shocks on, but I can't do that because I can't compress the uh, lower control arm to bring it up because it wants to hit the side of the lower control arm. So what we'll do is we'll just put the rack on quick. You know, be a quick video. But well, when you're putting on these Rack bushings, and the kid will, I can't get them out well, but anyway, um, I'm having a heck of a night here, guys. Good. We're going to stay in there. They'll have a rubber uh, bushing that goes between the rack and the cross member, and you just push them in there, okay? Like I did with my bare hands. I can't get them out now. So anyway, then you're going to see a couple holes up front here, take your bolts, I think they're 8 inch by 5 eighths if I'm right, slide them through, make sure you got your washer on there, slide them through like so, slide your bolts. And they're gonna pop through the other side. I don't know if you can see it, one here and one here. Then what you're gonna to want to do is grab the nuts for them. Okay, it'll take me a minute, guys. I gotta find some flat washers and stuff like that. Need some hardware yet. Alright, welcome back. I found some a washer. And then a lock washer. And then the nut. Now the direction of travel car is coming at me right now. So you want the bolts to face back. If you ever got to pull them out to change the rack, if you got them backwards, they'll go into the oil pan. So you want them facing backwards. So you can take the nuts off back here where the oil pan is and pull the bolts off to the front. It's a heck of a lot easier, guys. Well, I'm not going to tighten them up at the present moment. Now, next step I do.
Next thing our guy does is you're gonna you're gonna set the raft so it's in the middle, so it's straight ahead. So the steering wheel would be straight ahead. So what we do is we turn it to one side fully. Okay, so there it's jumped. Okay, now I'm gonna put a dot straight up here, pointing right at this this casting right here. Put a red dot there. Okay. Now we're gonna count how many times that goes around. Here, let me get a light there somehow. Maybe that'll help us. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Let's uh, get you guys in a little closer. Okay. So it's hard to see. Let's see. I wonder if this is easier. Oh, perfect. It won't. Okay. Now we want to count. Okay, so we're locked to one side. So let's count how many times that goes around. The dot is right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't want to put a line on here because the line's going to be the middle. I'll, I'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So now we're locked to one side. So let's count. One, two, three, let's see, let's see four is, four is locked. So now we'll back this up. It's about an eighth of a turn. It's like four and an eighth, I think. Yeah, if that even. Okay, so now we'll go back two. One. Two. Okay. So now the rack should be in the middle. You should be going straight down the road. And actually what we're going to do is we're just going to go just a hair more. There we go. To make a well, sixteenth of that. Now with this casting here. Now I'm going to. There's a the line. Okay. So this line. There. Okay, so now we're in the middle. So then the next step is what we'll do is, since we know now we're in the middle, see, this is called a bell. Now you can see the distance there. And there. Okay, so now, tie rod ends. Now the tie rod ends, I'm not going to tighten them up either because I got to... So what we're going to do, we're going to put this like straight ahead. Roughly. I couldn't pound on it that hard. I had the camera in my way. I didn't want to smash the camera. Now here we're going to have this adjustment jam nut. And then we got the, the outer tie rod in. The inner one is inside here. 
if that ever goes off there's an inner tie rod in here and this is the outer we'll screw this on there make sure everything fits good here Oh, that's just because of the seal. What was my first thing here? Okay. So we'll face up. Now let's turn this in until we meet up with that. Because none of this is going to, this is just dummy together for now because the Ackerman of this suspension is once the wheel's up, the tie rod here pulls on the spindle. Then your toe in or your toe out is all screwed up. So the catch is, is not to not to mess with Let's turn this in here. I got garbage all over here. For some reason this thing keeps moving around like a bar table. Those loose bar tables sometimes that are at the bar. Um, normally I would put NICs on here, but I'm going to wait because this is all going to have to be all reset when the car is done. I just wonder if I should put some on there now. You know what? I'm going to put some NICs, NICs, whatever you want to call it. I got it laying right here. Why not do it right? Just put a little bit on here, like about this much. Maybe throw some on the other side right away. Oh, I gotta grab a rig, guys. Now I got it all over me. So, okay, meanwhile, back at the ranch, put this back on here. You want to make sure it starts nice. Don't force it if it don't start. Keep trying until it does start. You cross thread this or you gallow the threads. Then you're, oh my god, then you're in trouble. Then you gotta take this all apart and fix this all. Oh, geez, I tell you. Looks like I put too much on. Perfect. the heck got it all over already see that god once you get it on your fingers it's all over the place there are freaking teed no 
I'll keep adjusting it until this turns in there. Looks like I got it too far in. Look at that. I got it all over everything. Got the camera right in my darn way, guys. And then I don't got the ball joints lubed up yet, so they turn hard. Once you get grease on, you'll be fine. <sighs> oh, let me guess. I don't have a wrench for that. What is that? got her started so all going to place here this is just like uh just pre pre doing things here like that turn it on and tight and then temporarily so I don't lose the cotter pins I don't want to tighten it up so I need to back it off a little bit there Just shove this through here like so and then just take the long side and just give her a little bit of a little bit of a bend so it doesn't fly out of there okay okay and jam nut since we put way too much uh, stuff on there now, we'll get it all over. That's what I do right now. It's just preset. Utilize the light right away, huh? 
just like them. Down that is on. I gotta get my big camera on or Now we're just going to swing it down a little bit. Not a little bit. I'll find where we put the. Uh, if you want to take your time, you can uh, get these powder pins so they go straight across. If you want to do that, I don't. I just. I just put them on sometimes. I just bend one side over a little bit because that's all going to be taken apart anyway. Just going to jam that down there. Some might argue you don't put NICs on this, but and some might say absolutely you should. Some people use uh, Loctite and uh, I don't know. I've never used Loctite. I just use NICs. And you can grab this as a wrench provision here, and then you grab a wrench there, and you just uh, 
you know, and you'll be in good shape. Okay. Okay, that's good for the rack. Later on, too, when I weld this to the frame here, you know, I got to weld G, G, G. Now, this bellow, sometimes I'll wrap a rag around it, or I'll just take the rack off. If it's easier to take the rack off, then that's what I do. So. That's where that jam nut went for the steering. One day we'll cross that too. I'll explain that then. Just get that back on there so we don't lose it. Huh. Okay. Um I think that's gonna be it for tonight, guys. So I think what we're going to work on now next is going to be we're going to put the rotors on, pack the bearings. I think I got to go to town and get some bearing grease. Or no, it's right here. Red red grease, extra heavy duty red grease. Because it, it's the extra tacky shit, you know. Resist temps up to 550 degrees, eh? So, these are on wheel bearings. So, that way. So, tomorrow we'll probably uh, put that together. So I guess tonight we didn't do much. I was going to put the shocks on, but um, the lower control arm is too far down. And normally on a car, you can set the weight down on it. Then you can put the shocks in, you know. They have to be compressed just ever so slightly. It's just quite not enough. So we'll leave them off um, until we get a front end on the car, I guess. But they're laying here, so. And they're right here. And I'll go through that later. You know, I'll lay them out. We won't do that now. We're only going to do this stuff that's kind of, kind of permanent in a way. So, okay, so tonight we, uh. Let's get this stuff over here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Brakes, brake bolts there, hopefully. I think we do. I think that's okay. Just kind of cleaning up after myself. My grandmother always told me that the job ain't done until tools are picked up. So let's, uh, let's pull these gloves off. This over here, and let's go for a tour on what we did tonight. Now the rack ain't tightened up; nothing's tight. I'm not gonna tighten nothing up. And trust me, I'll go through it once it's on the car. So anyway, um, the two mounts that hold the rack on, you gonna make sure you always put them. If I use something as a pointer. You'll see down here, you see that bushing? You want the bushing between here. And then, and then the outside, you just want the washer and stuff there. And then on the inside here, it's nice if you have a flat washer, a lock washer. And use a lock washer on this or because uh, with the engine heat, or if you ever have a fire, something backfires, you get a little fire run. This will still hold in a fire, okay? 
You don't want this rack to come loose. Then over here is the same way. And then right there. Right there is the same way. See the bushing isn't compressed yet because I don't have I don't have these nuts tightened. You know. So and then we we turn this back and forth. And then we fall in the middle. And then we do a line so that way our bellows on each side are equal. Equal to this. Both sides are centered. Then we just uh, screwed our, we made sure our spindles were kind of straight. And then just temporary, but now those, these bolts here, these big ones here, they ain't tight. These ain't tight either. So, because these, later on, when we get that far, I'll show you, I'll, I'll show you how to line this thing. Um, so anyway, so that's what we did. We made sure kind of the spindles are kind of in line, straight ahead in a way. Not perfectly, but that's good, close enough. So once it's a roller, you can push it around. So anyway, that's what we did. We kind of just did the rack tonight, I guess. Was going to do the shocks. Can't do that. I'm accustomed to putting these together once they're on the chassis. A lot easier to work on them. So it would take me two seconds to pull that rack off if I got to, because I got to weld here and under here, and then I got to weld the gusset in here later. The frame will come through here. So that's good enough for now, I guess. Please like and subscribe, guys. Tomorrow we're going to put the brakes together on this thing. Front disc brakes. And uh, and then this will be done for now. Then the next step we're going to do is we're probably going to build a frame. This is all for the 33 Plymouth Coupe. 108 wheelbase. So there will be a 6.4 Hemi in it. So... 488 rear maybe or 727 torque flight or something anyway take care guys we'll talk to you later please like and subscribe and have a good evening bye bye